Thank you very much. What a great honor and privilege for me to stand in front of you today. Rebecca, thank you so much for a kind introduction. I do believe you may have access to WikiLeaks to give those kind of pictures, but uh, I appreciate all you have done and uh, helping us out to get things done this past year. What I'd like to do, if I may, to divide my presentation into three sections. The first one, uh, clearly, I have to acknowledge, acknowledge my mentors, my colleagues. The second one, I would like to share with you some of those accomplishments the team has done this past year. And lastly, I would like to go over surgical volunteerism. Can we make a difference? As earlier this morning, Dr. Blomgaard was honored with knowing his lifetime achievement. As I said before, we lost our beloved executive director very prematurely about a year ago, just two weeks before our meeting in Sao Paulo. We all are in debt to her, and clearly the least we could do for her is to name this Distinguished Service Award with her name. We all were very concerned that with disruption in the leadership, it might be problematic. But like any great leader you see and you work with, she surrounded herself with a very able team. And at moments notice, the team stepped up to the plate. And clearly, they have done an outstanding job. What a formidable team. I do not know how to thank Margie, Jill, Laura, Heather, and the entire team for being so vigilant, to be so available, not just to me personally, but to all committees, and to get things done in a timely fashion. You made my life 100 times easier. We are indebted to these illustrious gentlemen. They understood the complexity of hepatopancreatibiliary diseases and were pivotal in establishing HPB as a subspecialty. Their hard work had led to the creation of AHPBA. They were right on the dot, and our vibrant organization owed them a debt of gratitude. These leaders further solidify our association's foundation, and under their great leadership, our membership escalated exponentially. I would like to recognize Mark Callery, who called the AHPBA a strategy retreat in October 11, 2008 in San Francisco entitled Going Global, Building Collaboration that Strengthen Our HPBA Today and Shape It for Tomorrow. At this retreat, the International Relation Ad Hoc Committee was established, and I was very fortunate uh, to be named and appointed as inaugural chair. At our spring meeting in the following year of 2009, I was appointed uh, to run the standard committee. Mark, many thanks for your vision, for your support, and, and for your confidence. This group of leaders are true doers. They push the envelope, and for the first time, they not only embark on the outreach and humanitarian teams, but also they themselves led these teams, and I think that was the critical in order for this outreach to be successful. When leadership does it, members would follow, new no questions ask about it. But more importantly, they continue to help us with both outreach team as well as with chapter activity. And this has led to the creation of 18, 19 chapters. Uh, what an impressive achievement Many congratulations are in, in order to you guys. 
I'm very grateful to Rebecca, Chuck, and Philippe for their never-ending support and for their advice. We spent significant amount of time on conference calls, made sure everything was taken care of it. I know our organization are in solid hands, and I'm very confident they will take it to the next level. Rebecca has coordinated this year pre-Congress Symposia with the program committee, previously called postgraduate course, which focused on controversies and conundrum in hepatopancreatic bilirubin. This was very invaluable experience, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Chuck, as our treasurer, he has made very sure that our organization is physically very sound, and clearly he has been very supportive of our textbook. Philippe's input has been very valuable, especially when we needed advice, real Latin America's perspective. Both Shishir and Shemul are powerhouses. You may not believe it, but by end of last July, the entire program was ironed out except for grading the abstract. Many thanks to the entire program committee for organizing such an outstanding scientific program. The theme of the program this year is securing the future through research, education, and mentorship. The program will include a diverse variety of topics with the next generation of HPV surgeon in mind. There will, be greater, there will be a greater focus on transplant topics, world leading speakers, and a spirited debate. Bill and Will both work very hard to make sure our meeting is physically sound. And Miriam and Mariano managed to send more teams in 2016 and this year than ever before. And they will show some of their work at the International Relations Symposium, and I would hope you will be able to attend and see that, since my time is very limited. Sean has developed conflict of interest policy. In addition, he really has been a tiger with the outreach activity. You know, he is not just there for fun, but he usually in action and doing extremely well. I'm very grateful for his support. Roberto and Chu have been working on our webpage, and they have been very instrumental with Latin translation, social media, among other things. And Mansour deserves the credit for being so persuasive about convincing the Council for Second Grant also for organize, organizing the research uh, symposia. Also, our physician extenders are very critical of what we do, and Lindsay is leading the Allied Health Subcommittee, and I'm happy to inform you that their numbers are escalating as well. Mike deserves a lot of credit for spearheading heading and revamping the clinical trials, and for working so closely with Dr. Pitt and the staff and NISCAP at ACS. Magellan's committee is very important and critical, given the rapidly emerging technologies and new therapeutic modalities. Clearly, I will need the support of both Tara and Rohan with creating international fellowship positions so that we can make a greater impact on capacity building. Doctors Anderson and House have been working extremely hard to recruit and support our members, and I want to recognize their relentless effort. I'm happy to inform you that over 200 new members joined the association just this past year. One of the biggest challenges we face, but clearly is a great one to have, is that we have very able and talented council members, and I might add that every one of them can step up to the plate and lead the organization in moments notice. Hands down, the, the nominating committee has one of the toughest and most challenging tasks 
of selecting our organization's future leader. One of the reasons why we have done so well is that because we have very dedicated council and extremely engaged and supportive membership. Because of that, I want to personally thank our executive council and you, the members. Rebecca touched on this, but it clearly it would be a remiss if I did not recognize my forefathers. It is nearly impossible for me to find family photos or me in younger days. This is because our house was flat in at least three separate occasions in Kurdistan by the ruthless Saddam Hussein. The few photos that I have included here, my great-grandfather sitting on your left, it was taken in 1898. My, father, my grandfather up on top, and my uh, g grandfather on top, and my father in front of his brothers. And all these photos actually were recovered from British archive. We had no photos of them at all. Again, the Rebecca touch and my mom, and I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to go back over it again, but I was very lucky to have her. Unfortunately, she's not with us. She passed away at the age of 83, and I'm sure she's looking down upon us, smiling. Uh, this gentleman here, uh, General, for the first time ever I've been to Baghdad. It was in 2000, 2009. I was invited to give a talk at Iraqi Paris Urological Congress. I may add that while we were going to give a talk, we had to write Hamvis to get to the convention center. And our names actually were not put in the program so that people would not know will be there. It was a significant risk, but in any event, I was happy to do it, and I would hope someday I would not just go to Kurdistan, but to be able to go all over Iraq. Again, I do not know how to express my heartfelt gratitude to my wife, May Soon, and our four children. My wife has single-handedly raised our children to allow me to pursue my career. We are extremely blessed to have such beautiful and well-behaved children. Clearly, the only thing I regret and dislike about my profession is that I seem to never have enough time to give to my family. I am sure this resonates very much with many of you in this audience. My word of advice to the younger one to please give enough time to your family and kids. Although I have gone through so much difficult times, especially when I was among the Peshmerga in the mountain of Kurdistan during the Kurdish Saddam fight. However, nothing really jolted me down more than when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer on April 21st, 2008. It felt as if the sky was falling on us we found ourselves thrown to the ground at the prime of our life while we trying to raise a very young family. Many thanks to Almighty God and to her physician, Dr. Quinn Chu, a surgical oncologist, for taking such a great care of her, and also the great support from our community and friends. In all honesty, our house felt like a flower shop after her mastectomy. I would like to back up a bit. On May 1st, 1976, I arrived in Nashville, Tennessee as a, ref a refugee from Kurdistan of Iraq, far away from my family. And I think I landed there because I think Nashville is center of universe, and I'm sure Dr. Pencer would agree. I had just graduated from high school in a refugee camp and barely spoke a few words of English. We were greeted with open arms. Dr. Owens was professor of genetic at David Lipscomb College, now is David Lipscomb University, and he was also chair of the pre-med committee. 
Professor Franklin Jones, who is Chairman of Education Department at Tennessee State University, and Ms. Melba, among other help, others helped us settle in Nashville. They helped us find jobs and took us to public library to study English at night as second language. I'm sure many of you think that I should continue to be taking English classes. <laughs> they took us under their arms like their own. They were like God's angels on earth. We shall remain in debt to them forever. Unfortunately, Dr. Jones is no longer with us, but I'm confident he is in a better place up in heaven. After graduating from Lipscomb, I attended the University of Tennessee Health Sciences Center in Memphis. While I was a pre-med student, I visited the lab of Dr. James Williams, who was actually going head to head with Dr. Starzl doing liver transplantation at the time. And later on, I assisted him when I was a medical student. I witnessed a liver transplant in an animal model it was an eye-opening experience, and it was then that I decided to pursue a career in transplantation. Also, Dr. Peters and Gabers have been great mentors. Dr. Lou Brett of Memphis took me under his arm, and when I told him that I need to be moving somewhere close to Dallas, but I did not really want to live there, the first thing he told me, he said, you need to explore LSU Shreveport, because John McDonald would take great care of you. Dr. Britt was very accurate because Dr. McDonald did take care of me like his own. It was because of him I returned back to Louisiana after I completed my fellowship in Baltimore in June of 93. He was a true Southern gentleman and a great mentor. Only times I told him no when he asked me to take over the Department of Surgery at three separate occasions. I must admit, he was not happy with my decision. After he passed away and left this world, and with the support of Mr. Elrod, our hospital CEO, we named the Willie K. LSU Regional Transplant Center at the John C. McDonald Regional Transplant Center, and they wall was dedicated in his honor. Dr. Amiri is very talented, energetic, and has a gifted pair of hands. Clearly, he is the cornerstone of our center. However, I think both of us becoming like antiques. However, he tells me that his father lived to be 102 years of age, and Amiri became a big brother to his infant brother when his father in the 70s. Dr. Amir is well known to break everyone's record, and I wonder if he would actually be able to break his own father's record. And I may add, as Sister Sophia, she need be very careful and be watching him. Dr. Allman has created the first great neuroendocrine clinic, and he is in charge of education of our house staff. We trained him and retained him. Also, I love our dedicated transplant administrators staff, medical personnel, as well as our colleague, McMillan, Singh, Dees, and Simone. Lastly, I cannot thank Yvette and her husband, Jose, enough. She is one of the most organized and efficient and dedicated administrative assistants I have ever known. It has been a blessing for us to get to know this wonderful, dynamic family. Quinn is a true surgeon scientist, and he is a cornerstone of the Department of Surgery at LSU. He has not only run with our AHPBA book, but also he has been leading a significant number of these teams for more than 15 years. Uh, he was actually given, appointed by President uh, Obama to American Vietnam Foundation. Uh, Trina has been very instrumental with helping us out with this textbook legal paperwork. Without her help, probably would cost us an arm and leg. Uh, John Thomas, as you heard him this morning, uh, uh, I've known him for quite some time. He clearly has a significant impact on the world. 
for doing outreach work and supporting poor people in Haiti and Africa and Southeast Asia. I'm very blessed to have gotten to know him. This picture was taken actually about three weeks before ISIS took over Mosul at the Prime Minister's office in Kurdish Regional Government, Mr. Nishirwan Barzani. And uh, he has been, he was the first guy to join me to go to Kurdistan as an American trained surgeon after the second Gulf War. And he has been there at least once a year, if it's not more. From Louisiana to Baltimore, I was very fortunate to have been given a chance to be trained as a transplant surgeon at Hopkins under the guidance of great mentors such as Mel Williams, Andrew Klein, Paul Columbani, and Jim Burdick. Also, Dr. Petus, Radner, and Fair were very sub supportive and great mentors and advisors. Warren Maley, Cigar, and Slaky followed me. I was very blessed to have Warren join us for a period of time in Sharifpur, Louisiana. Uh, clearly, his impact uh, on the program was very significant, and it took me quite some time before I would recruit anybody until I stumbled on, on a meeting. I developed significant interest in hepatopancreatic bladder surgery because of the impact of these pioneering HPV surgeons while I was doing my fellowship in Baltimore. They have been very supportive of me, and I will never be able to pay them back. A lot of credit goes to Javier, Oscar, and many of you who actually have worked so, so hard to create so many chapters all over Central Latin America and, and Caribbean. Uh, clearly, outreach and chapter creations go hand in hand. Uh, many thanks to all chapter presidents for your leadership and support. We are one big family. Also, I want to congratulate Julius Cesar Alfaro Varela and his colleague for creating the AHPBA new chapter in El Salvador. And hopefully, the Dominican Republic will join very soon. Ellen and uh, David have been very helpful. Uh, Ellen has been spearheading AHPBA ultrasound course uh, for fellows at our annual meeting, while David has been running AHPBA ultrasound and laparoscopic hands-on course in August in Carolina, at, at Carolina Medical Center. Many thanks to both of them and also to all faculty who have volunteered and been so, so helpful to, to provide this very valuable education to our fellows. Our foundation officer and board are clearly hard at work. They need our help. I would hope that every member of this association would contribute. It doesn't really matter how much. $5, $10, we want higher percentage of members to be donors, and that's what we're looking for. Um, the foundation gives so much, including all those awards you saw earlier today, research grant, fellows travel, and outreach activity and chapter support. Without them, we would not be able to do what we are doing right now. Uh, many of you participated in foundation fund run earlier today. And please also do your best to participate in the dance tonight. I think we're all going to have a great time. Both Oscar and Janaga have facilitated the process of harmonization between I and A. Now every one of us have a dual membership of both I and A with a much reduced rate. Also, they have been very supportive of the Joint Outreach Capacity Building Team. Through their effort, our outreach team will be able to use WHO logo before too long, which will give our team significant protection and also to facilitate the transit through international airport. Rebecca showed this. I'm not going to waste much time here. Also, uh, HPB Journal 
He really has a special place in our heart. Many thanks goes to Editor-in-Chief Professor Garner and to the Editor Callery, Connor, and Wigmore for lifting our journal to its prominence. I would like to share with you a few things that we have done this past year with the support of the membership and, and our executive council. We are very excited to announce the creation of AHPBA textbook entitled Hepatopancreatic Biliary and Transplant Surgery, Practical Management of Dilemmas, which will be published hopefully later on this year. We look forward to sharing the knowledge of so many experts in our field. This book purely addresses the clinical dilemmas, and it will only be complementary. As I said before, this is not a replacement to any major textbook, but rather will be complementary and purely clinical. It has six sec sections, which include liver, pancreas, biliary, transplant, trauma, innovation, and technology. All co-editors have worked very hard to deliver a quality textbook, and of course, thanks to many of you who have agreed and contributed chapters in this book. Also, I want to acknowledge that Dr. Chu had spearheaded this endeavors, and he clearly deserved the most credit. Additionally, as I said, his wife helped us quite a bit to give the legal paper for taking care of it. And finally, many, many thanks to Margie for her outstanding administrative support and help. I don't think we would have been able to give that. I'm not going to say much more about this, but John, you clearly misled me. I, I wanted this to be under Boma and Hoekstra in Dow to be in their name. Uh, but in any event, we are very grateful to both families for their kind support. Others, earlier today, we show you that we have ACS, uh, AHPBA Brandeis Leadership and Policy Award for first time. We have established that humanitarian medical award clearly having known his name and Distinguished Service Award. Additionally, we are given extra research grant annually. Some of the tasks are upon us, and one of the most important ones, as I see that, the bile duct injury prevention, which is spearheaded by sage, sages. And clearly, uh, we are hoping all of this would materialize by next, di next year Digestive Week although we have not have detailed information because we'll be meeting tomorrow. Uh, also, uh, one of the things uh, we have been doing, trying to collaborate more closely with uh, ASTS, I'm very happy to see Dr. Miller is here. He kind of surprised me to see him here, but I'm very honored to have him at our meeting. Uh, the, the team uh, been working with them, and they attended the ASTS uh, winter meeting at this hotel. Uh, they, they, they uh, Chris, uh, Shishir, and Shemul, all of them were here, and it sounds like the, their council uh, received it very positively, and hopefully we'll have some consensus conference addressing that. Uh, also, the supporting the pre-operative pre module for fellows, which group in Toronto are working on it, and additionally, working group for HB training and curriculum, and the GI Center of Excellence, Rebecca, is leading those efforts uh, under the auspice of the ACS. As you see here, uh, outreach trips last year, a total of six were sent out. This year, actually, there are two or three teams are missing from the slide, but at least there will be 14, 15 teams will be going this year. We have already been to Nicaragua, team been to Nigeria, team been to Bolivia, we are getting geared up to take some 20 odd surgeons, physicians to Kurdistan in the middle of May. Uh, so things in July will be going to Peru. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy to see that uh, members are jumping on it. Uh, this is a very noble uh, effort, and I hope that all of you uh, will dedicate some time, energy, effort into it. Additionally, our organization have supported uh, last year at least six chapter meetings. 
And uh, this year, we will be supporting six more. We have already been um, uh, to Caribbean and Nicaragua already this year. There will be some regional chapter, some chapter meeting and some regional meeting, actually. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy that we are able to do that. Now I kind of like to bring to your attention, you know, why, why I'm even talking about this to begin with. If you read the Lancet Commissions, and I recommend it to everybody to read it, approximately five billion people, or two-thirds of the world population, lack access to safe, affordable surgical and anesthesia care. Of the 313 million procedures done worldwide, only 6% done in the poorest countries. And this staggering statistic peak volume to the need of intensive capacity building in many parts of the world. If you look at this figure, which illustrates the annual and cumulative gross domestic product loss in low income and middle income countries, if you look at these five diseases, look at injuries, look at neoplasm, look at digestive, all of these fall in our territory and under our specialty. As you see that something need be done before these issues become actually a much bigger problem. How can we make a difference? I challenge all members in your prospective institution to establish international hepatopancreatability or surgical oncology transplant fellowship positions. We are at Shreveport are currently in the process of sponsoring one international surgeon to spend at least one to, one to three years with us to be trained in hepatobiliary, oncology, uh, transplant, and even trauma. Such fellowship is supported by our hospital CEO and community. I believe that many of you can leverage your, own, your, your influence within your own community to do exactly the same. I would like to challenge you uh, to be doing exactly the same. I encourage our own AHPBA Foundation to embrace this vision and at the same time to embark on grant writing and fundraising. There are too many NGOs, too many foundations. Money is there, they just, you need to seek it uh, because they don't trust uh, others. Uh, our reputation clearly would uh, be very helpful for what we have done over the years. Uh, there is no reason why organizations such as SO, SAGES, a, HPBA, SUS cannot send teams together for a common cause. I highly encourage my successor, Rebecca Mentor, to appoint an ad hoc committee and the International Relations Committee to explore these options to see if we could team up and sending these teams together. The future of international surgical mission is clearly in telemedicine and telefellowship. And I do embrace this. Finally, we need to continue to work with WHO. All this money been spent in great areas of medical, HIV, TB, you know, all these uh, communicable disease, which is very noble, but for God's sake, a little portion should be dedicated to surgery as well. And the only way for us to change that, we have to secure seats in the board of the WHO. Uh, it's very easy to say surgery is very expensive. We're not going to go there. Why should we do it? Mahatma Gandhi once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. I believe that it's our collective responsibility to take care of the less fortunate members of our world. We are very fortunate to have been given so much compared to the other 98% of the world. Most of us sitting in this auditorium have won a lottery of life. We have been given a gift and talent, and I believe that the burden, of, burden is on us to use this not only to cure and ease pain and suffering of others, but also to make our world a better place. Surgical volunteerism is a noble endeavor, and I highly encourage all to pursue it. I know 
it could be done because we have done it. And I would like to share with you just two small examples. In 2011, uh, Dr. Nick Vute led a team, and I was fortunate to be with him to go to Nicaragua. Nicaragua, a nation of six million, the second poorest in the Western Hemisphere. It took a shorter flight from Houston to Managua than from Houston to San Francisco. Yet they have never done a single procedure about major liver resection or whipples. It was then when a major liver resection was done. Many congratulations to Sergio Lopez Torres, hepatopancreatobiliary surgeon who is also has established Nicaragua hepatopancreatobiliary chapter. Now, Sergio, Holly, and Oscar are all able to perform hepatopancreatobiliary surgeries as well as interventional radiology procedures. This is capacity building. This is result driven. This is clearly impactful work. And it can be duplicated. It can be done in other part of the world. Here is Nick Vute. We were together in the operating room using an ancient ultrasound trying to see the images on border of the lesion. This is required an extended uh, right hepatectomy. Team Nick was all excited to see this ancient ultrasound, so we took a picture together in, in that ultrasound. Uh, this uh, gentleman I'm standing with, he had gallbladder cancer two and a half years ago, and Sean Clary, he performed liver resection. We just saw him when we were there in January, no evidence of recurrences and still kicking, keep our fingers crossed. Uh, but he is very supportive of what we do. In this case, we performed had necrotizing pancreatitis. Patient in the intensive care unit, and uh, patient uh, done uh, fairly well uh, at time. Uh, we left, he was, she was still intubated, but clearly all pressures were off and she was doing much better. You may not believe it, but they did not have a casket at their major hospital. I want to share this picture with you. Uh, in 2011, when we went there, we had the sympodia. There were not but maybe a dozen of individuals in attendance. This year, the chapter, in collaboration with the Surgical Association of Nicaragua, they are in excess of 160 people in the auditorium. So clearly, the message is getting there, and I'll give a lot of credit to the team in Nicaragua. Why I say that we need to collaborate. With collaboration, better work could be done. I had managed to get Operation Hope on board. I managed to get World Surgical Foundation on board. The Dr. Amiri goes to Honduras at least once a year with the World Surgical Foundation. And these guys do like 200 cases within like a matter of 10 days, something like that. Uh, but uh, as all of you know, uh, the region went through horrific wars and clearly genocide was committed. And I went back there 25 years ago, actually in 1992. Uh, this is uh, what most people think or see as symbol of Halabja, when the chemical warfare were used, thousands of people vanished away. Some 4,500 villages were, were demolished completely. And that during the Anfal campaign, 189,000 Basically, you were buried alive with mass graves. All of these photos you have seen during TV at one time or another, I just want to kind of show it to you what has happened there. That's why I justify to going back to that part of the world. I knew they needed it. The West could not have access to it. I was taking a rest to go through Turkey to get there. But if you look at it here, even our own elementary and schools, in 1974, when we got under attack, our only university was attacked before any military headquarters or political headquarters. The target education, education, and education. Yet our own kids, either they have to go to the caves or go back in the same building. Sometimes I question their parents for their judgment. Uh, after the first Gulf War, millions of people went to mountains. 
at least 1,000 people were dying every day. And uh, uh, Secretary Baker said, we cannot let this kind of genocide continue. And that's when British state and France decided to create New Fly Zone. And that's where I got in, in 92. Came through Zaku and ended up in Duhok, where I took next at least 25 years to make a hop out of there and start working there. This is my picture in 92 when I got to the checkpoint. The Peshmerga greeted me and escorted me to the city of Duhok. This one over here, this is the capital Erbil, where actually now we have an airport in it. It makes our life a thousand times better. A decade later, we couldn't go through Turkey. This is a taxi driver from Damascus. He drove us nine hours to get to the northeast to cross Tigris River so that we could get to Iraqi Kurdistan. Uh, about 2004, after the second Gulf War, an airport was built in Erbil, and Dr. John Thomas here sitting there, we managed to fly in directly from Vienna to the Kurdish region of Iraq. This is one of our team at the International Airport in Erbil. And the President Barzani greeted the team and he made sure whatever we needed we were at our disposal. Every time we go, we gave a state of art symposia, usually well attended conferences. Another team to Soleimani at the 25th anniversary of Halabja chemical warfare. Uh, signing actually here the Memorandum of Understanding to establish a fellowship between University of Duhok and between us uh, right before ISIS invaded. This is a case, first case we performed. First, living related kidney transplant in Duhok. And I must say that I just talked to them. They said they almost done 3,000 kidney transplant. And last year alone, they almost done 266, 267 kidney transplant. Well, before they only have access to so many dialysis machines, they would dialyze their patient two hours, twice a week. Yet they have family member willing to give organ donation. All you have to do is get organization, get people convinced and help them out. And there are a lot of willing people to make things happen. This child, year of age, Tekibnik, weight loss, and nowhere for them to go. As you see in this casket, literally entire left with half of right is gone. We ended up doing extended hepatectomy on this child, and baby recovered. Uh, you know, unfortunately, what will happen down the road, uh, you know, you, you do not know. I Miss, mean, he was alive at least a year later. In this case, a very young gentleman who was having mass in upper abdomen. This lesion was locally advanced. It did not metastasize. We ended up doing Whipple with liver resection, cholecystectomy, extended colon. And if you look at it here, you may not see it, but I'm doing it old fashioned way. I didn't have no staplers to use it to facilitate the, the procedure itself. Our ophthalmologist, attacking the eye problem, teaching local doctors. He actually donated this operating microscope from Texas. And uh, this, uh, a, a retired Peshmerga, you see his eyebrow, his whole globe was eaten up. A foul smell to it and nobody would touch it. Our team joined, the local team, and managed to excise it, raise some of these flap, and he was pulled through the surgery. This young lady traveled all the way from Fallujah, she heard in the satellite TV that American team has made it to Kurdistan. She came to see us, and the team embarked on it and resected it, and this is her picture later on. This gentleman, I think was 21, 22. You're having this giant sarcoma of the shoulder. It was infected, foul smell. None of family could actually be in his room because it smelled so horrible. Infected, and I helped chew at one o'clock in the morning one night to get this taken care of it because we didn't have enough war time. Too many cases to be done, but they were begging us, please don't leave this behind. And this is the most painful thing we do, to leave patient behind, not be able to get all done. This is Dr. Anderson of Knoxville. He is in the Committee of Trauma of ACS, teaching 
ATLS. We have a ER physician in New Orleans, and uh, Dr. Lou Smith, uh, trauma surgeons, actually teaching these people how to handle the trauma victims. Our neurosurgeons fix the spine, and now those neurosurgeons are able to handle most of this pathology. We help them with the Hawk Journal. They never had a medical journal in Kurdistan, and this is exactly what we're trying to do with Sergio in, in Nicaragua. They do not have a medical journal. Uh, why not? I told them the proceeding of the Sympudia could make an addition, and you could make two or three a year, uh, and that's what needs to be done. Supplies, and again, uh, we have been able to get a lot done for the hook, and uh, it's uh, been very, very gratifying, and I would like to con conclude uh, with this statement for Mother Teresa. I can do things you cannot, you can do things I cannot. Together, we could do great things. And finally, I want uh, to say God bless America. God bless all of you. God bless all peace-loving nation. Thank you for your time.